So um, happy Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving is an important uh, holiday in the U.S. So I'm still in um, California, and um, but I will be leaving California in a few days, and I will be in Vietnam. So the next um, international satsang we switch the time. So when in, I'm in Vietnam, then I do it at 6 a.m. Vietnam time, and for the U.S. People will be West Coast. I think it's 3, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. West, Coast. West Coast. Okay. And East Coast will be uh, uh, 6, 6 p.m. So next week we will switch. Okay. Uh, so the Vietnamese people have to wake up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So today is a Thanksgiving Day. A uh, very important holy day. And also is a good uh, time to say thanks. So the 3 p.m. on Wednesday. 3 p.m. Wednesday for California. So who's Darini? Is, uh, TTC just graduate. Just graduate. Yeah. TTC. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Very nice to see you. Okay. Um, so, Karuna Devi also yeah. just graduate. Yeah. Okay, very good. Nice. Mm. Okay. Um, so, join. welcome to join the International Satsang. Yeah, it's a regular. I try to be as regular as possible, so that you have a little uh, satsang injection <laughs> every week. Okay, so today I like to so take the time to talk about, um, you know, the attitude of gratitude. What is the attitude of gratitude? Is is a sadhana that you can uh, practice um, in your daily life. You don't have to do anything very fancy. You just have to be grateful. Count your blessings. Mm -hmm. You you have an attitude of all the time approaching everything happen in life with an attitude of gratitude. That means all the time be thankful. Yeah? Grateful. So I start with myself and then you can also think in your mind what you can be grateful for. Yeah? So... I'm grateful for so to be born in a country in war. I was born in Vietnam, country in war, so that I can understand the value of peace. Okay. Um, so I'm grateful to be born in a family that is not so wealthy, that is not rather poor, country in war. So then I appreciate everything and I don't waste things. I appreciate objects or things, you know, around me and I don't uh, waste things. I see people wasting a lot. Yeah? Um, so when we were young, we didn't have much uh, food. Yeah? So we have two bowls of rice and... Uh, and that's it. Maybe we are lucky we have some, you know, tofu or something. <laughs> or some uh, uh, go, um, green uh, ramu, means a green, uh, I forgot the name of that grand, of that vegetable. It's cheap. Uh, so, and on the, once a, a week, yeah, then the children have uh, uh, an egg. At that time, we eat egg. Yeah, but the children have and I have I used to cook for the family, so I I have to be very uh, creative how to make uh, the flour, you know, the 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 rice flour and cook it in different shape. 
and put it in a different shape and cook in different shapes so people think they eat something different but in fact they just eat flour <laughs> so I'm grateful for for that so now everything you appreciate hmm? so uh, I'm grateful for um, my family to decide to send me to um, to the West to study so that is a it's a, a very big change I'm grateful for the um, for the family of a friend that is able to register me in the school in Canada without me knowing anything so in the Canada then we talk about peace and we talk about Vietnam so I'm grateful for the time that I was very confused yeah so then uh, so from the confusion come the clarity you cannot have clarity without having to go through all kinds of thinking that is contradicting yeah when you have to debate a lot and debate a lot and think and think you know and conflict go through conflict and then you come with clarity yeah so I'm grateful for all this time of confusion because when you come war peace and changing continent changing culture is very confusing yeah uh, I'm grateful that um, that uh, I'm in in uh, a foreign country because uh, I cease to identify myself with one culture so I meet with different people different culture and I see the oneness in all so I love everybody so I don't get stuck in, in identification with one culture so that I'm very grateful for because uh, I have a big family now I have a big international family yeah all kinds of people from different country and a different language and a different kind of food so I'm very very happy to have a big family and to have a big family I have to um, you know I have to um, not seeing myself only as member of one family see so I have uh, many uh, uncles and many aunts and many mothers many brothers and many sisters many houses many houses yeah so then I have a, a big family the world is is a family and it's so nice you know you feel you have connection everywhere yeah and you are supported everywhere so I'm grateful um, to um, meet with Swami Vishnu Devanji and to uh, and to be able to uh, humble myself yeah because if you don't then your ego become very big mm, the ego means your idea that you know the idea that you are this and you are that and you like this and you dislike that this become very big so I'm uh, very happy and grateful to let go of all this kind of idea and um, to try to to please you know somebody that represent for me uh, the spirit the spirituality or the perfection that I aspire for so it um, it uh, was a very good thing so I stopped uh, talking <laughs> because I you know how it is you used to talk and have your opinion about everything and so now stop talking was a very good thing that I I was grateful for you know for many years I did not talk uh, I think six years I did not talk I just say yes Swamiji and then that's it <laughs> and um, it's uh, I'm very very grateful for that time you know, that um, that I didn't have to be a big person you know to be a simple person yeah you know, and to say 
okay to accept that I don't know much. Now, this is a very, very good thing when you know that you don't know much. When you know that you don't know much and you open up to knowing more. And um, so I'm grateful for Kama Yoga. Yeah, in the ashram, Kama Yoga is really teaching me so much. Yeah, I did not know how to cook certain kind of Western food like, I don't know, cornbread, I did not know. Yeah, muffin, I did not know. I come from Vietnam. You know, I, I used to cook just rice. So I learned to cook all these things. And, uh, you know, and uh, karma yoga of uh, building, I learned I did not know how to build. So I learned how to build houses. Uh, I learned uh, everything, electricity, plumbing, um, you know, how to take care of a land, uh, how to take care. And the main thing that I learned, and I'm very grateful for, is I learned how to take care of people. Because um, you know, people are very different and they are very difficult. <laughs> so I'm very grateful to have difficult people in my life. Yeah, and um, difficult people make you crazy, but then you have to learn to overcome your own mind, to accept them and to love them. So the more the people are difficult, the better it is, because you become more open uh, heart. Yeah, so. At that time, Swami Pranavananda and myself are the only staff. Yeah? Swami Pranavananda is very different than me and myself. So we all the time, you know, friction, have some difficulty. <laughs> he likes uh, to do asana, pranayama. I like to do karma yoga. I tell him, I tell him to do karma yoga. And he saying, you know, I need to do asana. <laughs> so, you know, so this and that, and all the time, and then I'm so grateful, you know, to to be able to uh, live with different people, different character, uh, different needs, different um, personality. Uh, some people are very difficult to understand, you know. To, to make them happy is very difficult. And some people are all the time very unhappy. You know, they, whatever you do, they are unhappy. And some people, they say yes, but they do something else. And some people, they say no, but they are, they are doing what you, <laughs> what you expect them to do. So it's, it's like um, a big training. So I was in a, in a big school, which is the Shivananda Yoga Vedanta Center, the ashram, it's like a big school that you have to train yourself, yeah, all the time, learning to adapt, adjust, accommodate, and to accept people and love people, to assist people, to give to people, and um, you know, so I I'm grateful for that. Uh, I'm grateful to see how much. Uh, uh, I was uh, egoistic to not um, be able to to give. You know, I learned one lesson. Is one day, for example, I thought, okay, so I need to learn to to give something, and then um, and to really give something, you have to give without thinking, you know, without uh, choosing who that you give to. Because you choose who you give to, then it's like conditional. So I thought that I would give something unconditional. So I have a, a yellow jacket that I like very much. At that time I was Brahmachari, yeah, wearing yellow. So I like my yellow jacket very much, you know. It's a very nice color, it's very simple, 
you know, it's warm. And then in the ashram, you know, you you wear that every day. So I thought, okay, so I should give it away. <laughs> so then I thought, I should give it away, and I give it to to somebody that I don't know. Yeah. So the first person that I met. So in the hallway, so somebody passed by, and I said, Do you want my jacket? <laughs> so then, <laughs> so I gave my jacket away. So then I rem- I remember the feeling that my mind is so attached to the jacket and I all the time for a few days all the time oh my jacket is sitting over here oh my jacket is uh, walking over there oh my jacket is eating oh my jacket is doing this and that I don't see the person that I gave the jacket to I only see the jacket so you see how it is you are very attached yeah and then after a few days, all of a sudden, I don't see the jacket anymore. You see? That means the attachment is no longer there. Then you don't see, you know, the object of attachment anymore. It disappears. See? So, so I learned that. I learned that, um, you know, what the, 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 what is called attachment. Attachment makes you only see certain things. And you don't see something else. It makes you blind. Attachment makes you blind. So you need to learn to give in order for you to overcome the attachment. Yeah. From small things, like me, I start like this with my, my jacket. You know. And one time I have a, a shawl, uh, a meditation shawl. That time I was a Swami already. It's an orange shawl. And then you use all the time, every day, you know. When you live in in the meditation life, you use it every day. And the soul has a has a little design, you know, some black flower, or black something line design on the orange soul. So after using it all the time for a few years, I'm tired of it. But the shawl is still good, so you cannot uh, throw it away. So then uh, I thought, I'm going to give away my shawl. So I gave to Swami Pranavananda. <laughs> Swami Pranavananda, you have a, a new shawl. And then he accepted. He said, thank you. But he really did not like it. <laughs> I guess because of the line. So then um, one day, um, so that shawl that I lived for many years with is um, in the, uh, called the free bin. I mean, the, the people donation of, of stuff. Yeah, so in a, in a box, completely discarded. Yeah, so I see, oh my God, you know, the, this is the karma of the shawl. You know, before it was on me and my med- meditation, and now it's been given away, and now it is somewhere in a storage box, and nobody look at it, and it's been thrown away. And then after some time, then I saw the shawl that I have given away was put on the chair of Swami Vishnu Devanji. Yeah, the best chair. Because the guru is sitting there, so then they put that shawl and become, you know, the most prominent thing. Everybody is looking at it every day. Everybody is bowing to it every day. <laughs> so then I learn, you know, the how life is. You don't know. You think that you are being thrown away, but then you end up, you know, be in the most important place and. Uh, so the karma of things, things change constantly. So I learn how things change. So, and um, the daily, you know, the, 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 the small thing has their own karma, has their own destiny. So that soul, you know, given away, discarded, throw in the box, in the storage, end up being the most important item in the whole meditation room, you know. And that's called the, the destiny of that song. See? 
So we also have a destiny. Yeah. Sometimes we think, oh, you know, nobody care about me. Nobody look at me. And then all of a sudden, boom, your life change. Yeah. And then you are in the limelight. And all of a sudden, boom, you are nobody. Yeah. So, um, so the, 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 the virtue of uh, giving, that's what I'm talking about today is Thanksgiving. It's also about giving. So you need to today try to find something to give to somebody, you know. And sometimes you say, oh, I have nothing to give. It's not true. You have plenty of things to give. Okay. So today, make it a point that you give something to somebody. Okay. And you say thanks to somebody. Yeah. Or you say thanks to your life. You have to thank everything. So I thank the, the time, the difficult time that I didn't understand psychology and I had to live with a lot of people and I have to learn about people and I have to learn to be patient. I have to learn to love people. I have to learn how difficult people actually are very good for you because, you know, you open your mind. You know, the more that they are difficult, the more it's good for you because it makes you humble. Yeah. So if you if you are with people that always say nice to you, then you are not learning that much. Yeah. And then um, um, you know, I'm grateful for nature, for Mother Nature. Yeah. The I was sent here in California, and it's a very different place that I thought in my mind that I will be living in. In my mind, I like to live in a hill, in a mountain, yeah, with uh, cold weather, with pine trees. And uh, I end up here in a California valley. It's not a, a hill, it's a valley. And it's not pine trees. And it's oak trees because it's so dry, yeah. There is no, uh, not much rain. And the oak tree is the kind of tree that can have very deep rooted, uh, rooted in the ground. So it survives in the summer when there is no rain. So then the, the landscape of the place where I live is very different than what I thought in my mind. So then I have, I have a little bit you know, thought in my mind. Yeah, should I live here? Swami Vishnu sent me here. Why I have to live here? I'm not happy here. Yeah. So then, then I thought, okay, you can go if you like. You can go a few, uh, you know, just one hour away. There will be the landscape, perfect landscape that you want. Yeah. Will you be happy there? In the mountain with the pine tree, like you like, will you be happy there? Then I realized, no. Yeah, I will go to landscape and different landscape and different landscape, perfect landscape, but I will not be happy because it's external. When I'm here in that dry place, valley, with the oak trees, but it is an ashram. It has the energy, you know, the spiritual energy and the schedule and the self, the discipline, and um, you know you have to do asana with other people. You have to be teaching, cooking, eating with other people. It's a big uh, school, and you're learning. Even though maybe you don't like the landscape, it doesn't matter. So I'm very grateful for that day when I was um, discovering. Yeah. I was discovering uh, the ideal place to live. Now somebody was saying the other day, I, I asked the person, why don't you stay in the ashram? Stay here. And the person said, no, I have to go home. I said, no, no. Home is in your heart. So where that you are happy, that's home. So I learned that. 
because I, I, I left home very early, 18 years old. I had no home, no country when after the war. And then I moved so many places and different countries. So I learned that lesson that home is in your heart. Wherever that you are happy, that's your home. So the best is that wherever that you are, accept it as your home and make the best out of it. Accept it. Love it. Yeah, that's a divine mother. Yeah. So now I love the ashram, I love the the oak tree. Yeah, they are beautiful. They're hundred years old. They're very big. And they have big branches, you know, and uh, they are beautiful. See? So if you dislike something and then you would um, you know you stop disliking and then you start to see the value of the thing that you dislike. Okay? So our mind is all the time liking, disliking. But when you become grateful and become grateful, then your heart starts to open. Okay? And you start to see things different. And you start to be happy. So if you are not happy, the first thing you need to do is to make the list of uh, things that you are grateful for. Okay? So I'm sharing my story, how so many things that look like difficult, but I'm so grateful because I learned so much. Yeah? So, um, what else I can be grateful for? You know? I'm grateful for the body because the body is like a, a vehicle and uh, sometimes you use it a lot. Morning, evening, <laughs> you use it, and it bears your, it bears you, you know, it accepts, it continues to serve you. Yeah, so I'm very grateful for this body, yeah, to continue to serve. Morning, afternoon, evening, yeah, I give a little food, and then a little rest, hardly some hours sleep, and then it keep going, you know. So I'm very grateful for that, yeah. Um, grateful for everybody uh, that is practicing yoga because classical yoga, this kind of yoga, is, um, you know, is discipline, it's not, it's uh, deep, but it's not, uh, it's not easy to understand. So, you know, you have to be vegetarian and then you have to practice holding your breath. You have to practice meditation, holding your thought. You have to uh, daily, you have a, a schedule you have to follow. You cannot just eat and, and uh, run and um, go out and do things you like. But actually, I'm very grateful for that. I'm very grateful for yoga. I'm very grateful for all the people that practice yoga in the world that make yoga become so popular even though they come from different kind of practice, different kind of school but still they practice yoga and yoga become a very powerful way how to bring peace to people or how to bring health to people so I'm very very grateful for all the yoga teachers, for all the yoga practitioners, you know. Now, this organization taught more than 50,000 uh, yoga teachers. They might not be teaching, they might not be practicing yoga anymore, yeah, but still, you know, I'm very grateful for them to have spent a little time of their life to practice yoga and to listen to the words of peace, the, the word of inspiration of Swami Shivananda. So I'm very grateful to know Swami Vishnu Devanji so that I know Swami Shivananda and I can read Swami Shivananda and he has so many, many books. So I'm very grateful for all the books yeah, because everything he says is so 
rich yeah and um, you can apply for the rest of your life you can read for the rest of your life and you don't have enough you know, time to read everything and to learn and to absorb everything so I'm very grateful to meet with that um, big huge treasure of knowledge of wisdom yeah because uh, you know when if you don't meet with a, a, a yoga or a, a enlightened person that talk uh, words of wisdom then you read literature around and magazine and novel and everything it's not really helping you so I'm grateful grateful very 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 grateful very very grateful uh, to somehow met Swami Vishnu Devanji, met Swami Shivananda and read his books yeah and I myself write some books but it's so helpful yeah and you know Swami Shivananda he has that passion of sharing knowledge he write all his books in in hand by hand and he publish his own books yeah he create the a printing press and he print books and he gave he gave books around yeah he gave uh, all his books and he write two to three hundred books amazing yeah every aspect of life you don't have to think he's already think for you <laughs> you can just read the books yeah and all the answers are there it's so wonderful so I'm very 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 grateful to have access to this uh, teaching to this uh, learning and um, to this master that talk in a simple manner talk about all aspects of life yeah he's not like living hundred years ago somewhere in India something you don't know no He's a universal yoga master. So everything he say is good for humanity. Good for everybody. Yeah, Swami Vishnu Devanji, he travel around the world. Yeah. So many times he go around the world and he always invited people to the ashram of different culture. You know, sometimes in the ashram you have Italian group, you have uh, um, Israeli group, you have the Spanish group, you have the English group, you have the French group, you have the German group, you have the um, South America uh, group, and you have um, you know all kinds of people living together and share everything together, you know, and laugh together. So this is um, something that I'm grateful for because um, then I learn I grow up like this I grow up in the ashram so then I learn the whole human family very big human family yeah so we need to open our heart uh, to love everyone because we have the tendency to like only the people that look like us we like the people that, that are in the same family, same father, same mother, same house, same village, same everything. You know, you, our mind has tendency to close off, you know, and it's very difficult to open because, you know, we, are all, all, we feel insecure that we open, yeah, that somebody that we meet very different than us, then we, we have prejudice. Yeah, so I'm very grateful. To, to grow in that context of multicultural and experience what we call unity in diversity. Yeah. And um, male, female, young, old people, all mix in the ashram. Yeah. And we serve them all. And the, like the teachings say, you have to see God in them. And how, do, how can you see God in people? You see, by by being exposed to so many different people, then you cannot even describe. So we call it God. Yeah, God is something that is present 
in each and every one. And um, so I'm grateful for that, um, for that um, education, uh, that spiritual education, that uh, Vedantic education, uh, to see the one self in all. And, um, you know, I travel a lot. You know, this place, that place, you know, carry suitcase. <laughs> Go from one place to another. You know. <laughs> so I'm grateful to to have to do that. It's not easy. You arrive to the place, you get jet lag. <laughs> and then you you have to leave. When everything is settled, then you have to leave. You come somewhere else, and then. But I have a routine. You see, I don't just go random. I don't go random because it's very distracting. So it's not about distraction, but it's about you know detachment. Yeah, and about opening up you know, to see that all is one. So, um, so that's my, more or less, my list of gratitude. So, you can um, uh, do it, your list. Yeah? And I'm going to give you a few quotes, a few people that talk about gratitude. Uh, somebody say, um, I am happy because I'm grateful. I choose to be grateful that gratitude allows me to be happy. Okay? So if you are unhappy, the first thing that you need to remember, be grateful for something. And the moment you have the thought of gratefulness in your heart, your heart starts to open. And then you become no longer unhappy. Okay? Gratitude goes beyond the mind and the thine and claims the truth that all of life is a pure gift. See? So we we have a sense of entitlement. We have a sense that, you know, I want this. I need this. You know, why life doesn't give me this? Yeah, so we always complain. But the attitude of gratitude makes that you see life is a gift. Every morning you look at the sunrise, oh, it's such a gift. Yeah? You look at the stars, such a gift. You look at the tree, such a gift. You look at the people, such a gift. You look at the food, such a gift. Everything is a gift. Life is a gift. Life is sacred. Life is beautiful. You are so thankful. You see? So this is um, uh, what gratefulness can do for you. So practice five things that you need to be grateful per day. You write it down. Yeah? Five things that you are grateful per day. And and your face starts to be smiling because you you're not frowning anymore. I don't have this. This person say that. I don't have this. I don't like this. All this instead of five things that you are unhappy about, five things that you are very grateful about. Yeah, especially if you complain about somebody, you need to be grateful for the person's presence in your life because it shows you what you what you are uh, attached to. Uh, it shows you your ego. Yeah. So be grateful, and and then gratefulness will uh, bring you to uh, joy. Yeah. Joy. Yeah. You have the joy. Again, I just lost my thing here. I need to. Okay, okay. So I'm reading some of the quote. He say, Gratitude is riches and complain is poverty. (laughs) So, you know, the more that you are grateful, the more you are rich. And the more you complain, the more you are poor. Okay. Um, 
somebody else say gratitude unlocks the fullness of life it turns what we have into enough and more okay so our mind is very desirous is always think oh you know I don't have this I don't have that so you need to turn it into gratitude I'm so grateful I have you know two shirts to wear I'm grateful <laughs> for somebody buy for me a uh, running shoes you know so then you have enough yeah so you're not feeling oh you know I don't have the job I want I don't have the money I want I cannot travel as I like I cannot you know uh, life is not fun and then you complain yeah but you need to first to be grateful for what we have and somebody else say Li live a life full of humility of gratitude gratitude is is the humility because if you don't have humility you will not be grateful yeah you'll be demanding and you'll be difficult and you'll be angry okay but live a life full of humility of gratitude intellectual curiosity and never stop learning okay so you open up you will continue to learn uh, instead of thinking oh i am who i am and that's it uh, and somebody else say you know when we focus on our gratitude the tide of disappointment goes out and the tide of love rush in it's so nice yeah so that means if you focus on being grateful yeah be thankful then you will not be disappointed because all the time you are disappointed you know and um, and and you don't love because you demand so if you are grateful for somebody in your life and you will not be disappointed uh, the person is not doing what you want and you are unhappy and disappointed but if you are thankful for their presence in their, in your life and you will not be disappointed and love come you open your heart and then love come the moment that you are grateful okay you see that so when you start to you know be unhappy yeah and be disappointed with people around you start to be grateful and then you start to open up to love somebody else say showing gratitude is one of the simplest yet most powerful things humans can do for each other okay so that means you need to thank people around you all the time try to thank people around you okay um thank a lot you know we don't thank enough we just say thanks <laughs> you know okay thanks and that's it no you have to thank people a lot i am so thankful that you cook the beautiful food you know i'm so thankful for you i was you smile so nicely i'm so thankful for you you have to really talk from your heart i am so thankful i'm thankful that you are in my life you know so then um it's the most powerful thing you know, to say thanks for people so please learn to say thanks yeah all the time say thanks yeah um give thanks for a little and then you find a lot okay so when you you see there is a little somebody gave you a little or you see something small you say thanks and that thing that some things small become big you know um somebody else say no duty is more urgent than giving thanks you see because uh, sometimes you say oh i have no time <laughs> <laughs> I have no time. No. You have time. You need to be thankful. At least you have to say thanks. Okay? At least. 
So gratitude is a divine emotion. Okay? It fills the heart, but not to the bursting. I mean, it opens your heart, but not like too much. Yeah? It warms the heart, but not to the fever. I mean, sometimes you, you want, you want a lot. A lot of joy, a lot of love, a lot of excitement. No. Yeah? Because you have a lot and then you get disappointed. But if you have all the time that grateful heart, you carry yourself around 24 hour hours and you feel grateful for everything. Yeah? Then it makes your heart all the time open. Not like open and close, open and close, open and close. Uh, that happens all the time, you know. But we need to keep the heart all the time open, evenly, all the time. This is what we want. You understand what I'm saying? And with that is the practice of attitude of gratefulness, attitude of thankfulness. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. It's so nice. So if you have the attitude of gratitude, then all of a sudden, your past makes sense. Yeah, instead of you rejecting your past, yeah, and you blame your past, you know, this happened, that happened, and then I was not happy, you know, but if, but if you turn it around into gratitude, you know, so I'm so grateful for this and that, yeah. And then your life makes sense. Okay? It brings peace for today. So today you are restless, you are unhappy. But if you have gratitude, then you have peace. Okay? And then, if you have gratefulness in your heart today, then tomorrow will be open. You have a vision for tomorrow. Yeah? Because you are not working on a place of need, a place of desire, yeah? but a place of God. Yeah, then everything is possible. Okay, so write it down. It's so important. Gratitude makes sense of our past. You know, because if we don't have gratitude, you can reject, you know, the, the past. Okay? And then you don't learn from the past. You reject everything. And then you don't have peace in the present, and you don't have a vision for the future. Okay? So, um... Gratitude makes everything turn into a gift. So if you have gratitude, everything becomes a gift. Right? Everything becomes a gift. And you become so rich. Hmm. Worrying, but in fact, you know, you worry. Worrying is like paying a debt you do not owe. So, that means what? You know, you worry and um, you, you lose the present when you worry. Yeah, and right now you have everything, but when you worry, you lose everything. You know, as, as if you, you don't have enough to pay your debt. You don't have any debt, you know. You become rich if you remember to be grateful. If you're grateful for the moment, then you don't have debt. Yeah? And you are very rich. And you don't have worry. But if you worry this and that and this and that, then you, it's like you have debts. You know, heavy. Gratitude makes everything grow. Okay? So you stand like this, you people. Now you are grateful of their contribution in your life. You're grateful, then everything will grow. That relationship will grow if you have that grateful attitude. So cultivate the habit of bringing gratefulness for every good thing that comes to you and to give thanks continuously and because of all things have contributed to your advancement, you should include all things in your gratitude. Okay? So cultivate that idea that everything, small thing, big thing, 
you are grateful for. Thankfulness is the quickest path to joy. If you feel that you are unhappy, you know, it's the quickest path to joy. I mean, try to be grateful and then you, you become joyful. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Okay, this is a nice wise word for Thanksgiving. Um, when we express gratitude for something or somebody, you need to remember that it's not just only appreciation in words, you say something, but you need to live by it. Yeah? You need to you you need to uh, carry you need to live uh, um, in an integral manner uh, sincerely. Yeah, you know, whatever that you say that you you appreciate outside, you need to continue to live that. So the more thankful I became the more my bounty or my wealth increase. That's because for sure, what you focus on expands. So the way how it works, what you focus on will become bigger. Okay. So when you focus on goodness in life, you create more of it. Okay. So today, important talk, because, um, you know, the key to success, the key to joy, yeah, is that. If you can just focus on something to be grateful for uh, and you become good in your heart, you become happy in your heart, then that will expand, it grow, it grow. Okay? So the key to success is to be thankful and to be grateful. Then things will grow around you. Your life will become so rich, you know, and... Um, um, you become a changed being. Okay, so give thanks for all that life has given you. Your life is very rich. So give thanks for everything that life has given you. Don't remember only the, the hurt and the difficulty and the disappointment. and Let it go. But try to remember the good thing. Remember the thankfulness. Okay? Um, so you can pray may we have patience for all the things that have not bloomed yet and gratitude for all the things that you have okay? to be grateful is to find blessings in everything okay? you, you see God in everything Gratitude will help you to fall in love with the life that you already have. Yeah? Your life is so perfect when you become grateful. Yeah? You fall in love with your life. You are so happy with your life. You need to give thanks even when you have a hard time. Yeah? You need to say thanks. Some people, <laughs> somebody said it's so nice here. He say, some people are always grumbling. Grumbling means, you know, unhappy. Some people are always grumbling because roses have thorns. I am thankful that thorns have roses. You see that? It's so nice. I mean, you just turn your thinking around. Then your life will be beautiful. So gratitude can transform your common days into thanksgiving. Thanksgiving like a feast like today. Turn routine job into joy. Okay? And change ordinary opportunities into blessings. Yeah? I read again. Gratitude can transform common days into thanksgiving 
like a feast, a celebration. Turn routine job, the job washing dishes or do things, into joy. You become very joyful if you are grateful. And change ordinary, ordinary opportunities into blessings. And then you have a blessed day. Okay, so that's enough. Thank you very much. So think of two words, gratitude, which is thankfulness, and uh, giving today. Okay, so try to give today something, and um, and also be thankful. Okay, so many people say here their words of thankfulness in the chat. Uh, I'm so grateful for Swami Sivananda, Swami Vishnuvananda, and for the yoga farm, and all my new family and friends there, and to see family face today. Thank you so much, uh, Swami Sita, uh, Karuna Devi, Radha. Say, oh, I'm grateful for these teachings, for Swami Sita Manda, for living and sharing the teachings, and for all of you for sharing your energy in this Sangha. Very nice. Sangha means a uh, a community, so we we are in its community. Uh, we learn together. Where can I meet up with you? I will be there, as present as I can be. I deal with chronic pain. Every ministry. Yeah. Thank you so much. Somebody say. Cảm ơn Swami Sita và các anh chị đang thực hành yoga ngày hôm nay. Thank you Swami Sita and all the brothers and sisters that are practicing yoga today. And uh, so, okay, very good. Thank you for being here. Yeah, so I will see you uh, next week uh, from from uh, from Vietnam. But the change time. So for Vietnam people will be 6 a.m. And uh, for other people you have to calculate for the West Coast is 3 p.m. For East Coast USA is 6 p.m. Okay. Uh, thank you. So we say the prayer now. Okay. Oh.